everyone, welcome back to another video. So today we are going to continue with part two of the series that I started where I answer all of your questions. So we are back again in nightfall. We started coloring a page in here and I'm going to continue with that page. I have my swatch sheets here where I put all 120 of these Brute Fooner colored pencils in perfect color family order and I made the swatch sheet here available in my Facebook group so that you can follow the video and fill out your own swatch chart so that you can have all your colors in perfect color family order. So in the last video, I think I had enough time to answer five questions. If you haven't already seen that video, I'll make sure that it is linked in the upper right hand corner, as well as the video where I swatched out all the colors for these pencils. I know so many of you are buying these pencils and I love them. I love them. If you ordered yours and you have not received them yet, when you do get them, you are going to be in colored pencil heaven. <laughs> They're amazing. And I'm going to show you that a little bit more today because we are going to color with them in this video. What I'm going to do in this video is I'm not just going to answer questions that you guys sent me that you wanted answers to. I'm going to kind of go through those questions as I color, but I wanted to be able to pick a color palette for this page so I kind of can get an idea of what colors I want my page to have or contain once it is completed. And I had another color palette and that's where I chose the colors from that I started with, but I kind of switched my color palette because I wanted one that had green in it. I'll usually pick out a color palette just to kind of give me some ideas of what colors I want to use. This is the page that I started coloring and I showed you guys in the last video how I like to do the shingles on a rooftop and I always leave a little bit of white down on the ends. It just helps to create a little bit more dimension and I used these four colors and they are very different from one another. I mean they're all in the uh, blue and purple family, but I also added in one kind of purpley reddish color here that is really, really pretty. And when they came together, they just created this beautiful blend of colors. When I'm using oil based pencils, I use them a little bit in a different way than when I use my wax based pencils. Like those of you that have seen me do all my Prismacolor tutorials, I lay them down a little bit differently and I kind of layer them over one another. And they're really great because I was coming in with these two colors, this lighter color and then this mid-tone purple. And then I came back later with this color that has some red in it, like a reddish purple. And I just kind of added it in different spaces so that you could kind of see a little bit of that red in different areas of the, of the roof. And it just created, I don't know, it just added different colors in different areas of the roof. And just, to me, it makes it look, I don't know, a little bit more natural how a roof would look. Not that we're always gonna see a purple roof on the top of a house, <laughs> but I just kind of wanted to make it look like it had varying colors in it. Like here you'll see a lot more of the blue and up here you'll see a lot more of the red. But if you look at it as a whole, it's kind of all of the same color. So we are going to continue with this today. And what I wanted to do was show you here. I have this on my phone today. This is Sarah Renee Clark's color catalog and it is absolutely fabulous. It is, it's a lifesaver. If you want color palettes, this is color palettes to your heart's content. So this is the volume one color palette that I have up here. I also have the volume two, volume one and volume two are both available on her website as well as her color companions. Her color companions are an add-on that you could choose to add on to your purchase after you, I think you can get it if you purchase just one, 
just volume one or just volume two and you probably can add it on to either one of those but if you get the bundle of one and two i know that you definitely can add the companions on to that so the companions are a list a whole pdf that gets sent to you along with the color catalogs that has the actual pencils like say your prismacolors for instance or your luminance for instance and it has the actual color listed or the color the color from the pencil or the number what have you listed along with the color palette to tell you exactly what color that box on that particular color palette is going to match up to so this is the color catalog and it is very interactive so i want to find a great palette that is going to go with this but I want to make sure that my palette has green in it because I want to be able to do all of the leaves and these little bushes that are sitting in front here so what I did is I just kind of clicked over here on colors and of course you could zoom it in and zoom it out it would be much better on my iPad I'd probably be able to see it much clearer but this makes it easier for me to kind of hold the palette up to what I'm already working on and be able to see the colors. So if I, I'm looking at this and I just kind of want to pick a purple, so I'm going to click on the color purple. And what the color catalog is going to do, it's going to bring me to all the palettes that are listed under purple, as you can see here. So I'm going to click on one of these and already I see purple with some green that is a really great palette I'm not so crazy about the black that's in that one if that is black let me go back so to go back you would just go back at the top of your page and you would click back on the little what looks like a color wheel sign and so I'm going to go back to my purples and I'm going to zoom it in here and I'm going to see if there's anything else that has green in it. And it looks like that is the only one here that has some green in it, but it's got that gorgeous pink color. I could do that in the flowers and then the orange. I don't know if I really want orange. Let me go back here and try to find something else. How about if we try, if I look at this, this kind of really matches up to the ultraviolet. That's a pretty close match. So I'm going to click on ultraviolet and it is going to take me to all the ultraviolet palettes. That one's really pretty. Oh, there we go look at this one that is a really really pretty one what do you think look at that gorgeous bright green so I may just use this and kind of use it as a base for my picture I really really like that one those of you that have the color catalog this is volume one like I said earlier and if you if you like this color palette it is color palette 205 so just in case you're looking for it and you want to kind of follow along or you're coloring this page too but what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to take a screenshot for myself this is so convenient I really really love this just because of the convenience and I don't have to be on the internet looking for color palettes and believe it or not today my internet is down and it's been down since last night so I have a video to upload and I've not even been able to do that so I'm a little aggravated <laughs> because my upload speed that's usually like in the 20s is 0 0.36 right now like I literally can't even upload anything I had a video that was supposed to go up today so I'm not really thrilled about that <laughs> So I decided to film another video for you guys. I'm going to look at this and we're going to choose some colors. And I already, oh my gosh, let me see. Let me pull my chart here because I think I want to do some of the leaves. 
But if I look at this, see it's great that I have my phone and not my iPad. I'm not trying to match things up with that big old iPad sitting here. But I am looking at this screen here and it looks very close to this color called Bluebird. And that, that does not look like a Bluebird. <laughs> but that is 076. So I'm going to use this green that I matched up to this box on this palette here and I'm just going to use that as a starting point for my color matching. I think that I want to use one of these really bright beautiful colors to go with this and then I think I want maybe a much darker green so I think I'm going to go with Bluebird and I can't decide if I want Firefly Glow which is 066 or 118 which is Lemon Gin I think I'm going to go with the Fireflow, Firefly Glow. Now these are translations, guys. If you did not see my previous video where I swatched them all out, I also provided all of you with the translations that was provided to us by um, Yi Jing Yang, who was so kind as to translate all of these colors into the English names and then allow me to be able to share it in my Facebook group and with all of you guys that watch me on YouTube. So here's the 066 and I think those are going to be really pretty together but we need something that is going to be much darker for our shadows and I may even want to bring in a fourth color. I think I might want a little bit of a variance here. Hmm. Oh my gosh, you guys, go to the comments right now and tell me what color here in our greens, what you would have chosen. I have some more greens over here, too. So we've got, like, a dark green up here, but that's way darker than what we have here. I don't want to go too dark. I think maybe this one called Grasslands 080. Let's go ahead and pull that one. Now we are all zoomed in and I'm going to start with these colors, but I don't know if I might add something else in. It's looking like I may need to add something else in, but I think my points are fairly sharp. You guys know I always use my doll 133 to get nice sharp leads. And when I'm using oil pencils, I like to kind of lay my lightest color down first and I don't know I experimented in the last video and I was doing the lightest color first and then I did some of these where I did the darker color first to see how much of a difference it made with these pencils just because I don't know when I get a new set of pencils I like to really just kind of test them out and see what they can do and I can tell you yeah, see, I was going to do the leaves, and I forgot to mention that. I decided in between a break that I wanted to get these bushes colored. <laughs> Just because they're closest to the roof, and the leaves are kind of way down here. And then I started thinking maybe I should do these in these greens, these um, bushes. And then maybe I should, what part of this? I guess this is all bush in here, maybe? And then I was thinking maybe I could be a little bit different when I come back and I color the uh, the actual leaves. When I'm coloring in this book, I really like to go to the back of the book and look up the kind of flower that is on the page. And I don't know how many of you are familiar with these Maria Troll books, but in the back of the book, she has a whole list of the actual name of the flower. So I usually will just go on Google and see what kind of flower it is. And I will try to color it from like a realistic picture and make it look as much the same as I possibly can. So as most of you know, when you're doing uh, work with oil pencils, you want to layer your colors. And usually, just like when I do anything with my Prismacolors or a wax-based pencil, I like to leave the white of the paper if I want white of the paper to be there to use it as a highlight. So I do do the same thing with these. That's just like what I did up here in the roof. I'm not doing it down here on these because 
this is a pretty bright, really beautiful highlight color, and so I really want it to stand out once I finish coloring in these bushes. Let's go ahead and get to the first question. The first question is by Stacy Ridley, and she asked me, how long have you been coloring and why did you start? Okay, so I have been coloring. I think I started coloring way back when the Joanna Basford books were first released and adult coloring was just kind of this really new trend and everybody was kind of jumping on that bandwagon and wanting to try it out and you would go I don't know I would go into like Barnes and Noble which is if you're not in the US I don't know if you have I don't know if it's an international store I doubt it is but it's our bookstore here one of our real um, big box bookstores and you would go into the Barnes and Noble and you would just see a huge table right when you walked in of all the coloring books and Joanna Basford's coloring books were always the very first ones right up there on display and I was just I don't know I was intrigued and I wanted to try it and I had never really done anything really artsy before that so that was really different for me and I don't know what was that five six years ago it must have been oh gosh now look here guys so this is where I'm really going to start adding some of the color into these bushes because there is a huge variance in the values of these greens and I'm going to make sure that I lay this green here in all of the places where there would be a cast shadow I did a video where I explained all about cast shadows and how they work and how to figure out where they actually are and I will link that video in the upper right hand corner if you're interested in watching that it was more like a tutorial not in a coloring book but more so having you draw out a circle and I did it on a worksheet that I created but you could just draw a circle on your paper and you could actually um, follow it so that you have a better understanding of cast shadows and where they would lie. So it was cast shadows and highlights and it taught you exactly how to figure out where the light is falling and where it's coming from and it was a really great tutorial so if you want to see that I'll make sure that's linked but that is when I started coloring and as far as why I don't know like why <laughs> I don't know I guess it just really intrigued me and I wanted to start something new and like when I was growing up and I was a kid I always really loved coloring but of course back then it was crayons you know and I really did enjoy it back then and I, I mean we all know from when we're a kid like how relaxing coloring it is and how fun it is and we all do it from a very young age I mean that's how we learn that's like the one of the first things that we do when we're growing up and we're children and it's one of the th first things that is taught to us we're all handed a coloring book and it's the first way that we're actually kind of taught to be creative I think so I don't know I think for some of us too it kind of brings back some of those memories right and it's always fun to have good memories especially from your childhood. Let me go ahead and go on to the next question. And I think I'm going to have, I am definitely going to have to bring in another color because I'm looking at this and it still looks very flat. So I am going to bring in a darker color so that we could kind of give this a lot more depth and dimension than it already has. I decided before I go on to the next question that I am going to pick another color. So right now my darkest shade is this 0. Point, or 080 right here. And I don't think it's dark enough. So we've got this 080 with a 076 
and I believe we went, yeah, with the 066, six, the 066, six. <laughs> I can't even talk, guys. So we've got these three colors here, which is very, very pretty, but I think they need something more. So I either want to go with like an olivey green or another green that has a little bit of another color in it. And I think that our swatch had some teal in it. And this green has some teal in it. So I thought that that would be really cool. Here's the swatch. And we do have a uh, part of the palette here that has a little bit of teal in it. And so this is the color of that dark green. It would be more so kind of down here, but I kind of want to save that for when I choose some other colors for the page. So I'm going to go with this dark green and I'm going to go ahead and pull that one so we can add that in. Let's go ahead and go on to the next question. So the next question is from Sharon Francie Robinson. And she said, is it better to treat the background before or after the picture? So when I'm doing a background, I don't know how many of my color alongs you have followed along with, but when I'm doing a background, I always do my background last. And I don't know, that's just been the way that it's always been for me. I, I like to match my color. I, usually I'll get out my color wheel or look at my color palette and see kind of what I have going on in the picture. And I actually did a video on this very recently where it was on how to choose your colors, which was a very... A really good video by the way so I will make sure that's linked in the upper right hand corner because that may be helpful for you I like to look at my picture as a whole after the whole thing has been completed and there has been balance that has been created overall or over the whole page and I like to sometimes get out my color wheel and see what color is going to be most contrasting to the actual coloring page and whatever the focal object is. Like in this picture, the focal object is going to be my little house here. And so when I came back and I did the background, I would probably, since this is right along the edge, and then these flowers here are gonna be along the edge, I always look along the edges. And then I grab my color wheel and I see dependent upon whatever is around the edges of the page and the color on the focal point of the page. After I've created all the balance, I like to go back and check my color wheel and see what color is going to be the most contrasting to where it still does not take away from whatever the focal point of the page is because you still want that focal point to just really stand out because you want when somebody looks at your page you want whatever the focal point of your page is to really stand out to be able to do that when you color your focal object of the page you want to make sure that you have a lot of areas where you've created highlights and your shadows to where it creates a lot of depth and dimension so that when you lay your background down, your background is going to be really pretty, but it's just going to kind of add to it and it's not going to take away from that focal, paint, focal point of your coloring page. So your background will probably look a little bit more flat and that's okay. And sometimes I'll even come back after I do my background and I will shade in with a pencil and come over the background and just go around the outer areas to just create a little bit more depth. So that's a little tip or something that you can try. And it really all depends on what medium I'm using for the background of my page as well because I don't know, it just, it all really makes a difference. There's so many different things that you can do for backgrounds. I mean, you could even take black acrylic paint and lay, the all, lay that all down and cover the page. You can use pastels. You can use, uh, I, I really enjoy using my Faber-Castell gelatos. And what else? I've got, to, I've got 
a playlist for backgrounds on my channel and I will link that in the upper right hand corner so just in case you guys are looking for backgrounds for your pages I have a whole playlist and I've used a different medium for every single one of those videos so the next part of her question is likewise with gel pens is it better to apply before or after coloring with pencil when I'm using gel pens, I use gel pens in a couple different ways. So sometimes I use gel pens in a very mixed media type page to where I use just specifically gel pens on certain areas of the page and other times I use gel pens to add highlights and if I was doing that in that case I would be using my white gel pen and so when I'm doing that I usually lay the gel pen on top of the colored pencils and sometimes it's very difficult when you're trying to lay your gel pens on top of your colored pencils because you will find that sometimes it clogs them up especially with the Prismacolor since they're wax based but sometimes you will find that they do tend to get clogged up and so it's kind of hard or difficult to be able to get your gel pen to continue to keep running so one of my favorite gel pens is the Uni Uniball Signo yeah I think that's what it's called but I absolutely love that gel pen it is my favorite and it is the one that I have found to work the best to where it doesn't clog as much as some of the others the jelly rolls I know so many people love those jelly rolls but let me tell y'all they don't make me happy <laughs> I mean, if I'm straight coloring with my jelly rolls, that's all fine. And I really don't have that many jelly rolls because I bought some in a very small pack. And then the ones that I had bought, the pack that I bought, I had some defective pens that just straight up would not work at all. And when I tell you I was over here researching and trying to find out what to do to make these gel pens work, I found several other posts of other people complaining that they had the same issue with receiving defective gel pens. So no, not in any way am I hating on Jelly Roll <laughs> because they've got some gorgeous colors and I do use them. But if I am trying to lay like my like say my white jelly roll over over my Prismacolor pencils. It just doesn't work well for me. Generally, I will use my jelly rolls for a mixed media piece where I have a lot of things going on on the page, like when I feel like I'm in the mood to color with markers and take out my, my alcohol markers. I love to use them on pages like that where I take my alcohol markers and I color over my alcohol markers with pencil and then I'll take parts of the page and I'll add in my gel pens and usually when I do the gel pens I don't usually generally have anything underneath them I'll pick parts of the page where I just specifically color with the gel pens in certain areas of the page so that's my story on gel pens <laughs> but if you want to know what my favorite gel pens are my absolute favorite gel pens are the color it gel pens they are fabulous I absolutely love them and they are the best ones I have ever used and just recently I purchased the tan mitt gel pens and I actually did an unboxing and a review of those and I showed them again in my last massive coloring haul look how beautifully these pencils are blending together y'all my goodness these are amazing but I showed them in my last coloring haul and I really do like 
the tan knit ones. Um, for me to really like gel pens, I like the ones that come with the refills. I like the ones, of course, that are a little bit cheaper because we all know that Jelly Roll are kind of high in price. And so sometimes we just want to save our wallets. And I really don't believe a lot of times, in some instances, the saying where we say, um, you know, you get what you pay for. In some instances, that's very true. And you just want to spend the extra money the first time around because if you don't, you may end up very disappointed because you're going to have to go out and spend your money again. But with the color it gel pens, I've not I can't say about the tan mitt gel pens because I've not used them for long enough to really say, but I've been using the color it gel pens for quite a long time now. And I can promise you that they are absolutely amazing and they are worth every penny. And the price has actually dropped over the last, I don't know, I think this year since the pandemic. Because I know when I purchased them, I paid more money for them than what you can get them for now. So the price has dropped and I think you could get like 96 gel pens along with all of the refills for around $45 or so. So to me, that's not so bad. And I don't know, I like the tan knit because they come with several different colors. And I think I got 120 gel pens and they also come with the refills. And what other gel pens do I have? I also have the shuttle art ones. And the Shuttle Art ones are decent gel pens, but some of them are a little bit scratchy. But they have some of the colors in that set that I can't get in another set. Like I'm always looking for a light blue just because I love finding light blues. Because it is one color that is just hard to come by. If you want a light blue gel pen, that is available in the cheap Shuttle Art set. <laughs> But I like blending my gel pens, so I like to have all of the colors. And so with all of the gel pens I have, it's very easy for me to pick and choose colors from here and there and kind of mix them together and get really nice blends. If you haven't seen my video on how to blend gel pens, I'll make sure that one is linked as well. Now guys, I can only link five videos, but I know that sometimes it's very hard for some of you like I get questions all the time I need to know how to do this and I need to know to know how to do that like somebody asked me um, just recently on the post on my YouTube where in my community tab is where I have some of you posting some of your questions for these videos so that I could do color and chats and just kind of answer your questions but they asked me how to color with Prismacolors, if they got Prismacolors and they don't know how to color with Prismacolors. Well guys, where did my channel start? <laughs> so I know there is a lot of new people that have started following me and are just finding me. And by the way, welcome to all of you. If you guys have any questions, make sure you go to my community tab and you leave those questions there. But this person asked me about Prismacolors and I have an entire playlist on my channel for everything I've ever done with Prismacolors and I would say that's probably the majority of my videos because you guys know how much I love my Prismacolors. I'm definitely a Prismacolor girl. So, and that is where this whole thing actually started was with me coloring with Prismacolors. I actually started my Facebook group which was actually just Prismacolor combinations. And then it is, since I started my YouTube channel, I decided to go back and change that. So that's where we are now. I really love these pencils, but I don't know if you guys can tell. Can you see the difference in how the oil pencils lay down compared to if you were using something like a Prismacolor or a wax-based pencil? Can you see the difference in how I'm kind of just layering them and then I'm coming back and I'm just kind of blending them through with another layer over the top? So I'll come back here and I'll kind of go in a circular motion and I'll try to pull them through just a little bit more. But so you guys wanted a tutorial also on how to use oil-based pencils 
And I think you're kind of getting that in this video too. This video is kind of an all-in-one. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm going to name it. <laughs> we chose some colors from a color palette and I'm answering some questions. We're learning how to use the oil-based pencils. So this is really cool. But I think we're about maxed on layers on this paper. But I really like that. I can't wait to come back and color in these little flowers because it'll just really just kind of pop. And when I come back and I color these flowers, I'm actually, because they're so small, so when you have flowers like this that are so teeny tiny, the trick to those is to come back and use your white gel pen like we just previously talked about. You would use your white gel pen to create the highlights because it's kind of difficult to try to blend something in flowers like this. So, and I don't know how difficult it's gonna be for me to do that using oil-based pencils. I could probably figure it out a lot more with my wax-based pencils with a really sharp, sharp point. But, I don't know, we'll see how I do with the oil-based pencils. The next question is by Danielle McClard. Hi, Danielle. <laughs> I know her because she's so active in my Facebook group and she's always posting. So, hi there, I'm on your question. <laughs> I hope you're watching. Okay, so how can I train myself to not be so heavy handed while I color? Okay, so she's got a couple questions here. And this first one, I would say that this one is kind of difficult because so many of us are heavy handed. I even find myself being very heavy handed at times and it doesn't work so well when you're using something like Prismacolors because they're so soft. So my first recommendation, if you are heavy handed and you're trying to not be so heavy handed, while you're trying to make that transition, I would say get yourself a really nice set of oil-based pencils. And if you're on a budget, I would definitely recommend these pencils here, the 120 set of square Brute Funer pencils that I'm using in this video. You could see how beautifully they lay down, but I could push pretty hard with these and have a lot of pressure behind the pencil and it's not going to mess up anything that I'm doing and it doesn't lay down too much pigment because when you're working with oil-based pencils you have to learn how to lay them down in very light layers and kind of layer them over one another rather than blending them together as you would with something like a Prismacolor that is wax-based but I would say that I'm going to come in here and I'm going to start over here on this bush but Oh, should I go this dark yet? No, I shouldn't go that dark. I'm going to come in with my next color. I think I kind of mixed my colors up here. Goodness, now these colors look so close to one another, the two darker shades, I can't really tell which is which. That's okay. We'll figure it out. <laughs> Anyways, what was I saying? See, I totally got off track. I get so distracted, guys. Do you all do that? Like, start talking about something and then get distracted and start talking about something else? That is totally me, all the time, every day, 24-7. <laughs> or I'll remember something that I had to do, and then whatever it was that I was working on, I'll come back like hours later and be like, oh my gosh, yeah, I was doing that earlier. Wait, I need to go back and do that. Oh wait, what was I doing? <laughs> oh goodness, life, 24-7. Anyways, I know I'm not the only one that's like that. But yeah, while you're learning to train yourself to not be so heavy handed, that's the only thing that I can say is I think that when we are very young, like we're really not taught not to be heavy handed. And it's really not something that, I don't know, I've always been so heavy handed. I mean, you could even still see here on my hand from when I was very young, I've always been a very heavy handed person. So I have like this indention on my fingers. That's so horrible. And it's been there since I was very, very young, like a child, because I always pushed down so heavy on my pencils. And I remember being in school and always being so frustrated because it would actually hurt. Like it was way worse back then. Over the years, I've really learned how not to be 
so heavy handed just because of what I do now, but it does take a lot of practice. And I would say just be more conscious about what you're doing, but going to an oil-based pencil instead of a wax-based pencil may really help you. And it also may really help you by starting with the wax-based pencil because if you push too hard, the lead's gonna break. So if that's something that is gonna motivate you to really be more cautious of it, then maybe that's what you wanna do. But I would say it's up to you. But it's really something that takes time and it takes a lot of time. I have always just been a very heavy handed person and it's just been a lot of practice. So what is your next question? So, oh yeah, so she must be using Prismacolors because she says, and with Prismacolors, how do you keep it from getting all over the black lines of the picture? So she is using Prismacolors. Okay, so I don't know, like that all depends really on the book. I mean, are you coloring a PDF page? Or are you coloring in a specific book where the Prismacolor is covering the black? Because sometimes I actually do want to color the or cover the black. Now, I don't when I color in a book like this and I use my Prismacolors, I I don't know. I use the black in my favor, so it's like I really don't mind the black lines being color, colored over because if you guys have watched some of my previous tutorials when I'm using or tutorials when I'm using my colored pencils I will come over with my darkest shadowing color and I even did it here or I started to do it but I noticed here let me pull this down a little bit but I even did it here in this one but I started to do it and I need to come back with my mono eraser and kind of erase some of this and fix it but I started doing doing it with the oil based pencils where I just kind of sharpened them to a very sharp lead and kind of went over the lines to create more depth and I tried doing it with these and it didn't work as well because I'm so used to using a wax based pencil primarily a Prismacolor I mean it even works so well when I do that with my Artezas but a lot of times I will do that sometimes I leave it alone but it all depends really on what I'm coloring, but I really don't so much worry about the black lines fading. Sometimes I just really do want to get rid of them, and sometimes I want to leave them there. And Danielle said that she always ends up, after she's finished coloring her page, going back and tracing everything with the black Prismacolor pencil. Now, a little hint on that. Instead of going back with your black Prismacolor pencil, my suggestion would be to do what I just said. And I don't know, if you go back on my channel and you look, I'm sure you'll find lots of pictures where I've done this. But I, a lot of times, especially in my tips and tricks series where I was coloring the pot, the flower pots, I showed how to create a lot of extra depth by actually going over the black lines but I would use a color from the same color family that you're using from your shadowing color and I would just kind of go back over that in the areas where you want to create a whole lot of depth and shadow and the Prisma colors are fabulous to do this with they work so well so I've already gone through one entire battery and exhausted it so <laughs> I know that this video is already quite long, but that's okay because I like my long videos. You guys will have to let me know in the comments below what you think of the length of a video. I know a lot of you said you enjoy my longer videos and you just come back and you watch them kind of in increments or you listen to them in the background even if you're not watching the coloring or whatever it is that I'm doing. I know a lot of you leave my videos playing in the background, but I've had a couple people leave comments and oh my gosh, like not really nice at all. <laughs> and they're just like, even especially on my tutorial videos, they'll tell me things like, um, less talk and more doing, they'll straight up say. And like, those comments are so, I don't know, to me that's just nasty. Like there's no reason to leave a comment like that on anybody's video. And I don't know what some of these people are thinking. It's like, there's a real person behind the video. <laughs> Would you come over to somebody 
if you were out in public somewhere and say something like that no you wouldn't so like why are you gonna come and do that on someone's YouTube comments but I don't know a lot of those things I just delete them and I go on with life but I know a lot of you that follow me and you watch all my tutorials you enjoy the longer videos and I enjoy making them because when I'm sitting here and I'm into a video and I'm just talking and doing a tutorial I don't pay attention to how long it's taking and I really don't ever know how long it is until I sit down and I start editing and then sometimes I look at it and I'm like what I talked for that long really but like y'all I can talk <laughs> Like, I can seriously talk. And I'm really enjoying these color and chat videos. So if you want to continue seeing these color and chat videos, then please let me know. And I don't know, they're not just color. I'm trying to, like, kind of fit a bit of a tutorial in here, too. So it's not just color and chat. It's kind of color, chat, and tutorial because, you know, guys, I can't ever do anything without showing you guys something or showing you how to do something but those people that do that on my channel like I don't know how do you think that you're gonna do a tutorial video that requires commentary and instruction without talk and more doing if you wanna see a video that is more so somebody doing it and just applying whatever they're showing like in a regular color long then go watch one of the channels that does it in that format but that's just not my style and that's just not how I do things and I like explaining every step of everything that I do so that all of the beginners that are following me really understand how to do something themselves and I think that they that the videos and the style and the way that I do things I think that they have been really helpful to so many people and I love doing what I do so you know I just let the nasty comments just kind of be forgotten because what did I tell you in my last chat guys don't ever sit here and focus on the negative you always have to find some kind of joy in every single day. Okay, so let's see what the next question is. And I think that I am going to answer one more question. What is the next one? Oh my gosh, this one by Heather Lewis. This one had me, this one made me smile. So, yeah, Heather, if you're watching this, like, this totally made me smile. <laughs> but she says, personally, I could watch you color a restaurant menu and be totally amazed. <laughs> so pick whatever book you prefer, because when I um, asked uh, to post your questions, I also asked you all to tell me what coloring book you wanted to see me color in and uh, Maria Trolls books and Erie were some of the top ones y'all wanted to see me color in so that's why I'm coloring in this book because this is my favorite Maria Troll book so anyway um yeah Heather your comment just totally put a smile on my face and oh my gosh you guys I was thinking I'm gonna go grab an Erie book and I'm gonna find a restaurant menu and I'm gonna color it <laughs> but I know exactly what she meant. And I was just like, you know what? I could find a restaurant menu in a coloring book too. <laughs> but her question is, what is your most valuable advice for a total beginner? My most valuable, valuable advice is, I see so many of you that are beginners that follow me and watch my videos. You critique yourself so hard and you need to just kind of let that go and not critique yourself and color for relaxation and just sit and just do it. With any skill, no matter what it is, you have to always practice. And yeah, guys, I have swapped out my colors. I'm back using um, 080, so it's not my darkest, but my second shade of darkness, or dark, did that sound right? My second um, shadowing color, that's what I meant to say. But um, 
you have to practice like you just have to practice like if you're learning how to draw a portrait you are not just going to sit down and draw a portrait and it's going to come out absolutely amazing you're gonna sit there and make adjustments you're gonna learn from what you did and you are going to progress over time and so you just need to grab a coloring book grab some I mean but I would start I would not go out if you're a beginner I would not necessarily just go out and buy expensive pencils because if you're just coloring you don't need to have expensive pencils I tell you guys that all the time yes it's nice to have all of those pencils and I know some of us are just collectors and we want to have all of the things and guys I do too but even making YouTube videos and using my pencils all the time for my videos, I'm still not going to use all the pencils that I've acquired since doing YouTube in a lifetime. So you don't need expensive pencils. I would start, I would first decide if you want to learn with oil based pencils or learn how to color with wax based pencils. Wax based pencils are going to be softer but they are going to blend together as you lay them down and they probably are more user friendly I guess I'd say and probably easier for a beginner to learn and then oil based pencils like you see here are going to lay down more so in layers and you can just lay them down and you just keep laying the layers over one another and you do it lightly so you just go back and forth over it in light layers and as you could see I'm going over the whole thing now here adding my highlight color back in but yeah I would choose how it is you want to learn and what mediums you want to use if it's colored pencils I would just grab myself a budget friendly set like either these if you can get them they keep going in and out of stock in and out of stock and it's actually quite ridiculous but that might be my fault guys <laughs> that really might be my fault <laughs> but they just cannot keep them in stock so I would just choose the pencils that you want to want to choose and if it's oil based pencils I would suggest these if you could find them or the Speer Farbens which are also fabulous um, budget friendly colored pencils and if you want to start with a wax based pencil I would probably suggest either Arteza's or Black Widow's. Arteza the biggest set is 120 and the Black Widows, you will, you have the option of buying those all in separate packs so you can acquire those over time and so the price on those, you're getting 144 pencils in total but if you're on a budget you can kind of pick the first, uh, the first package first which comes with a lot of the colors that you'll need and then you can add on to it as you learn your color pencils a little bit more or you kind of pick up your skill or you could afford them and you could just kind of add on to them as you go. The first set of the Black Widows comes with 24 pencils. There's three sets that you could purchase that all come with 24 pencils and they are about $17.57 I think per pack on Amazon so that's a really great way to go and then you could just add on as you could afford them. They also have skin sets a dark skin set and a lighter skin skin tone set and so you can purchase those I think for like eleven dollars and fifty seven cents so you could just kind of add on to those as you uh, as you are able to afford it and if you want after you get all 144 you will find a video on my channel where I actually took all 144 from all of the sets and I put them into perfect color family order so yeah that's what I would do I would just get a coloring book decide on what pencils I wanted whether I wanted to start out with the oil based or the wax based 
and I would start with some budget pencils and you don't need more than one or two coloring books just find something that kind of inspires you and just start coloring and I also have a video I have a whole series on my channel adult coloring for beginners if you guys can see I'm just kind of adding another layer over here to create more depth but it's I really like how these pencils work they're so so nice but I have a whole adult coloring for beginners series on my channel and the very first video in that series is exactly about this but that video will tell you exactly where to start for beginners so I don't know Heather if you already saw that video or not the next part of her question is what books would you recommend for a newbie and which pencils do you think are best to learn with I've heard Prismacolors can be finicky because they are so creamy and soft. So yeah, I think I just answered that because I told you which budget-friendly pencils that I would recommend. And the Artezas are wax-based, just like the Prisma. They are closest, I would say, to the Prisma. If you look over here, I did that with Artezas. They are wonderful pencils. But my video for that, that was like my most popular video on the channel. I taught everybody how to create texture and highlight and um, depth and dimension, but that was my most popular video on my channel. I think it's got close to 16,000 views now, but I'm very proud of that video because Google has picked it up. It's coming up in Google searches, and yeah, I'm just really proud of that video. So anyways, those are my suggestions for pencils. I would decide which kind of pencil you want to use and then I would go from there and choose one of the ones I suggested. And do you agree and would you recommend a different, bre a different brand to learn shading and highlighting with? Okay, so I already answered all of her questions. And I'm gonna answer one more because I think I'm pretty much done coloring, but I'm gonna answer one more question since I wanna get five into this video. I'm trying to get five into each video, but if you are not happy with the finished page, do you fix it? Do you show it anyway? Or do you hide it and forget about it? I don't know. For me, I have started, I have a lot of whips, work in progress pages, and I think that's probably just because I do a lot of tutorials. So this one's kind of hard for me to answer, but in the past, if I've had something that I'm not happy with or I didn't like, I have several videos where I show you if you do something on a page that you don't like or you don't care for, I have videos on my channel that show you how to fix your mistakes. And I even have a video in my tips and tricks series where I showed you exactly how to fix your mistake and pick all the pa pigment up off the paper. Okay, so I don't know if I said, but this question is by Sonia Regina Edgar. So she was the one that asked me if I was not happy with the finished page, do I try to fix it? But these are my two favorite erasers. They're both uh, by Tombow and they're the Mono uh, series of erasers, but this one is fantastic because it gets into very small little areas. And this one is great too for erasing bigger areas. Now if I do something on my page and I don't like it, I use those erasers and I erase everything. And I showed it in a video on my channel in my tips and tricks series, how you could actually erase a whole entire area and go back over it. And I had layers and layers down on that page Page and I still was able to pick up most of the pigment and lay down more layers and you would look at that and you would never even know that it, there was ever even a mistake or I did something that I didn't care for in that area on that page. And as far as a whole entire page, I don't think I've ever done a whole entire page where I just was kind of like, I don't like this whole entire thing. and. If I do something on a page that I don't care for, I will always find a way to come back and fix it. So yeah, if there is something that I don't like, I do. I find a way to do something else, lay another color over it, or do something. I mean, it depends what the reason is why I don't like it, but there's always a way 
to fix everything and don't ever look at anything as a mistake because what you are looking at and you think doesn't look great. I've seen people come in my Facebook group several times and say, I'm not happy with so-and-so. And it's like, I'm looking at it and I'm just like, what is she talking about? Because I am i don't see anything wrong with this. Like, I think it's beautiful. So, and, and a lot of people will come back and they'll comment and they'll be like, well, I don't see the mistake. Like, where's the mistake? <laughs> so I, that's, you know, that's what I said in the beginning of the video. I think a lot of us critique our own selves a lot more than we should. And I think that, I know it's hard. I know it's better said than done, but I think that we just critique ourselves too much. And I think that we need to stop. <laughs> Because you can always fix every piece of art. But yeah, that's my answer for Sonia. And her last part of her question was, do you hide it and forget about it? So no, I don't hide it and forget about it. I fix it and I move on. And I don't know, if it's something I don't want to show, I just keep it to myself and I don't show it. So yeah, I wouldn't say I hide it, but I just don't show it. <laughs> Okay, so that is probably the end of this video. I'm going to go back and I'm going to add a little bit more shading into my little bushes here. I think that they are so cute <laughs> and I can't wait to color in the flowers and I might show you guys a little trick on those flowers in the next video. Like I told you earlier, we're going to color them in and we're going to bring in our uh, gel pen. I know somebody asked about gel pens in this video, so if you want to see me use my gel pens, make sure you stick around for the next color and chat because we are going to do that. So anything I mentioned in this video, I'm going to make sure that I link it down in the description box below. And I hope that you guys keep asking me questions because I'm really enjoying these videos and it actually gives me an opportunity to be able to sit here and color and I feel like I'm just talking to you guys. And I really like it because this is so much more relaxing than just doing constant just tutorials and talking and explaining exactly what to do and what to do and what the next step is and what the next step is. <laughs> so in this case, I'm kind of doing it and you could watch me color and see how I do it. And then I still get to answer your questions at the same time. So ask me questions if you have them on the post in my Facebook group or on my community tab in YouTube and I will make sure that I get to all of them. And I hope you all have a fabulous day. Happy coloring. Bye.